good afternoon. As this is the last presentation, I hope you, will, you are able to focus for the last 15 minutes. Um, this is the... Okay, here we are. Okay, um, today I'll say something about the research program we participate for the last 10 years. And at the end, I would also show you the real example of, let's say, real case of the maintenance work uh, we were invited to. But I will start with, let's say, saying something about the Goldschmidt itself. So, uh, as it was mentioned, for the last 30 years, we developed the inspection systems for the railway infrastructure. And for the and, uh, last 25 years, we developed the um, devices systems to diagnose the turnouts and crossings. And uh, based on that experience right now, we can offer both let's say, handheld devices, trolleys, gauges, uh, profilers, as well as uh, high-performance trains. And from the very beginning, I mean, we collect this experience of 30 years because we cooperate with the many experts all over the world. We combine this knowledge and share it with the, with the clients. Um, and because of that, we, 10 years ago, more than 10 years ago, we were invited by the system, uh, Deutsche Bahn System Technique to the program they set up, in effect, uh, in 2004. Uh, the goal for this program was to extend the lifetime or service life of the crossing by 15%. That was the original plan for that. So uh, they set up the test track nearby Hanover. It was mentioned here by the colleagues from Fest Alpine. Um, and year by year, they uh, launched the new, let's say, sub-program when they checked the, I don't know, six, five units of, of rocks. And so basically this test track is a two kilometers of straight track on the line with this maximum speed 160 kilometers per hour. And every 100 meters, they install the frog. So example, the five of them just to check the different kinds of materials, different kinds of maintenance plan, welding process, grinding process, all of that during the last, for the last 20 years, they, 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 um, they carry out a lot of uh, programs like that. Um, they also decided to measure each of those frogs every three months. So that was a lot of work to, uh, to measure and a lot of data they can learn from. To, uh, one of the goals for that program was as well, but I will not say too much about that because Jan had a great presentation about that. It was to make a model and a simulation how the uh, wheel, let's say, what is the trajectory of the wheel when it's passing the the frog. Uh, normally, as you know, uh, the, the, the wheel is changing the support from the ring rail to the nose, to the uh, crossing nose, or vice versa. And it, every, when everything works fine, this process is relatively, let's say, smooth. But the forces are always created there. But if something getting wrong, uh, let's say the, there is a wear of the one of those elements, or the, let's say the, the geometry of the terminal is changing. Uh, the forces are created there, and that can lead to the damage of the frogs. It was on the several presentations, so let's stop here. To control this, uh, this process and to check uh, what is happening with this uh, within the frog, uh, they created such a movable tool. Uh, it, it is easily, at, let's say, they can easily attach it to the temporary to the, uh, to the frog. When the trains are, several trains are passing, they collect the data. And based on that, they can um, check not just the vertical, let's say, um, uh, movement, but as well that, they are, let's say, they are able with the algorithm they developed as well for many years in the, in the Dresden University to recognize where, let's say, what is happening, what kind of forces are on, are on the surface of the frog, inside the frog, or between the frog and the sleeper. And as well, the nice feature of that, uh, of that device is that they're able to find the place where the, the transition point, where the wheel is changing the support from the wing rail to the frog. And having the information from the several trains, they can draw such a, for example, such a diagram, diagram like you here, like we see here, where we see the distribution, distribution of the um, this uh, transfer point, and let's say this, this, this point when the wheel is changing the position, uh, changing the support, uh, 
from the beginning of the, of the frog. So here we see that the majority of the wheels change the position or change the support between 25th centimeter up to 45. Huh? Let's, for, let's, say, let's remember just that. Okay, but having that, they just know that, let's say, something has happened happen and uh, let's say condition of the turnout is bad. But to see, let's say, what was the reason of that, it is necessary to measure it. To, to have a clear information and precise information about the geometry. And here we, uh, our company is coming to the stage. Uh, so in 2013, they asked us to develop the tool uh, that time we called it Scorpion. The prototype really looks like Scorpion, it doesn't. But, um, it is able to measure the full 3D model of the, let's say, create the 3D model of the crossing in the field with the accuracy 0.1 millimeter. And this is really, really do. Having uh, that information, we are able to recreate such a 3D model. This is the free, uh, real example of the crossing uh, we measured on the test track in, uh, in, uh, next to Hanover. Having that 3D model, there is the software behind. If we can cut it, the model in any direction, and for example, we can we can, um, we can check what is the longitudinal profile of the nose, but not just in the axle, yeah? in the center line. We can shift this to the sides, so we can, we can have a full information about what is happening there. We can also cut it in a let's say, cross section, so we can come, ah, the software is able to compare the 3D models, so we can see how this frog is changing in the very high accuracy in time. Yeah, here is, uh, we see the, what have changed uh, within three months. Yeah, we see in the same moment the, war, uh, the wear and the plastic deformation of the, of the crossing. I'm sorry, of the nose of the crossing. Okay. And, okay, that was the theory. But, I, um, but let's uh, focus right now. This how it, let's say this is not normal situation. Yeah? There's, let's say when the uh, when something is happening with the with the crossing, with the yes with the frog, uh, you have to, I mean someone have to plan and the service team is, is coming to the to the site, and they in most cases do do some welding, some grinding, but to evaluate what they, I mean the quality of their job, they have a very basic tool, and this is the situation is all over the world. They have just a straight beam. And now this name, uh, what is the name? Feel again. Exactly, that one. <laughs> uh, sorry. Um, and, uh, and this is all what they have. This is all what they have. And they check the, let's say, the, the longitudinal profile of the, of the nose, which they try to reprofile to the original stage, just checking it, the checking on the top of this, of this nose. Nothing else they can do. This is the tools they have. But to be honest, no one's known where, in the fact, the, where is this tra trajectory of the wheel? Because this trajectory could be shifted a few millimeters to the side. And even if they do the perfect grinding on the top, the reason of, let's say, they, they visit on site, that could stay there. This is the main problem. So coming to the example, to the real case. A um, few years ago, we were asked to participate in the um, service work in Switzerland. That was the, it was the turnout on the station, regular line. And the scenario of this was like that. We are coming there, we, do the, we, measure, the, uh, we measure the frog with all the tools we have. Then the service teams, they do their job. They have a, it was the really experienced guys. They do the job. After that, we measure it one more time. We check what was, let's say, what was the effect of, this, of those works. If necessary, we give them, some, we give them uh, some advice and they do some correction and we check it one more time. That's what happened. Okay. So, as I said, we measure it. We measure the full geometry of that. We checked it with the ISA system by Deutsche Bahn Sister Technique. And what we discovered at the beginning, first of all, the um, the condition of the terminal was really poor, really poor. On, on the upper chart, we see this is the acceleration. So in that case, it was up to when the trains 
past the, the frogs, it was up to 80 G, which is far, be, let's say, more than, it's, uh, than it should be. In the regular, let's say, in the normal condition, in the switch in the normal condition, it should be between 40 to 50. Okay. But this is just one of the, let's say, problems. The, uh, the two other problems we see on the lower chart. First of all, so we, this, this is, let's say, everything drawn here is from the beginning of the nose. Yes, the zero is there. So first of all, we see that the, most of the wheels are changing from the wing rail to the nose, let's say more or less starting from the 50 centimeters from the beginning of the, of the nose, which is one more time far. I mean, it, it's too far. For that kind of turnout, for that design, it should be between 20 to 35. So situation is pretty bad. But what is worst, and this is coming from the devices, that there is the information that 41% of all the wheels, they change the, this, let's say, the support from, on the very short section, two centimeters. So you can imagine that, let's say, the situation like someone is sitting there with the hammer and just hitting at hitting in the same and same place. So it, uh, believe me, this is very dangerous and it, it can easily lead to destroy the, the frog. So, uh, we measured as well the geometry. So uh, the situation has been confirmed with the longitude in the longitudinal profile. You see there, 50 more or less 50, 52 millimeters above, uh, from the beginning. We have seen such a hole. That was the reason why, let's say, all those wheels hit there. Let's say, do this uh, had this impact in that location. Okay, that was the beginning stage. Uh, they did their work. As I said, they had the ruler, they had the straight beams, they had the, uh, that one, <laughs> I cannot learn it. Um, and uh, after that, when they finished, uh, we checked it one more time. And there are two information effects. I mean, they did their job really good, having those tools that they have. They limited the acceleration to the level, to the typical level, 40, 50 G. They moved the, let's say, the, uh, the, the transition closer to the beginning of the, of the frog, so as it should be. And normally they would leave it, I mean, they would finish the job at that stage. And I would say no one would blame them because it was, uh, everything was fine. Yeah? From their perspective, everything was fine. But when we take a look closer, here still is the situation uh, that right now, in that, in that case, 24% of the, of the wheels, right now change this, uh, change from one ray to another on the one more time very short spot. It means that that situation in a very short time, one more time, lead to the, lead to the situation that that let's say, location will be damaged and damaged more and more and more, and they will have to plan the maintenance one more time. The colleagues from Conox, they, they, yeah, there was the situation that they, they, they record the, uh, the half of the turnout, and they also, uh, there was the chart where someone did some maintenance work and it didn't work. This is exactly, this is exactly the situation. In the very short, uh, in the very short time that it would lead to the situation, then they have to do it one more time. Okay, so um, they did some small correction, really small correction. It took additional one hour based on the, let's say, uh, advices by, by us. And this is the situation which we had at the end. That one more time, acceleration on the same level as it was before, but right now the distribution of the transition point have a Gaussian curve, let's say this Gaussian shape, and this is exactly how it should be. And that guarantee that, that is, let's say, if, at least for, from that reason, from the geometry point of reason, that turnout will stay longer healthy. And conclusion to sum it up. Um, really, there is right now, all over the world, there is no tools to evaluate, let's say, the, uh, the, 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 the service works. There's, um, there's the, the same method which have been developed 50 years ago, it is still in use. Uh, for us, I mean, uh, we, um, we really believe that it is fundamental that 
each turnout, which is new, like, let's say, new building turnout, should be checked completely with, with those systems. Because the starting point is, is crucial for the, let's say, for the uh, health of this, of, of this turnout. So this is like a, this. This is very important. And as also I told you that at the beginning, the the, the goal of this uh, program by Deutsche Bahn System Technik it was to extend the service life by 15 percent. They proved that using the all the, let's say, of course, the correct material shape uh, of the of the of the frogs maintenance plan, they, it is, is even able to extend it by 50 percent. And this is already proven by more than 20 years of, let's say, of test by them. Um, and our goal is, and just to last, last sentence, uh, for last two years we do everything, because you have seen this, I mean, this, we call this Scorpion, this is a pretty big machine device, which is not very handy. So all our, let's say, um, intellectual forces is to move and implement those, all this experience to the small device like here you see, you also can see it outside on our table. Uh, and the goal at the end, because let's forget about the data, let's forget about the device. At the end, we would like to provide clear information to the service team. Please focus on that section. Please grind a bit more in that area. Please add some, do something else. Yeah, this is, it cannot be the rocket science for the people working outside. It is raining. It is too cold or too hot. They want to do their job and go home. And this is our goal for the next, let's say, uh, in the next one year, to to give them this clear information what they should do. Thank you very much.